I'm so excited. I have the awesome privilege of introducing um, an awesome actress, um, amongst other things, Jacqueline Fleming. First of all, Jack, I'm, I'm so happy to have you. Thank you. I, I appreciate mean, that. I'm super excited for many reasons. One, because Jack is um, a phenomenal actress. That That's Thank always you. a highlight Thank you. for me. But outside of that, Jack is an awesome, awesome businesswoman. And more than that, she's my friend. And Jack has a lot going on. Oof. Do I? <laughs> Jack has I'm a not really, lot not really. going on. <laughs> but it's a positive lot going yeah, on. Yeah, positive. Know, there's some people that has a lot going on, it, but, but they have nothing going on. <laughs> right, right. So you are somebody that has a lot going on. And the purpose of the interview today is, mm -hmm. is Jack, you have such a compelling story. Oh, you, you, thank you. There is so much more to the brand of Jacqueline Fleming that the world has no clue. They have no clue of who you are, where God has brought you from, correct, and where God is taking you to. Come on. So now. I'm so honored. <laughs> I'm so honored that I'm one of the first to actually be able to share the other side of Hollywood. Okay. You know, just we just gonna have a little girl chat. We just talking a little bit. All right. We talking like we not on camera. <laughs> we just faking like we talking well, yeah. real life. You know, but this is like at the know. house. Exactly. We just having fun, and it's it's um. There's so many young women. Mm -hmm. I guess where we can start from, you can kind of you can kind of give the give the people just a glimpse of who is Jack the person. Okay. Where do you come from? First of all, when they look at you, it's obvious that you're not all the way me. <laughs> yes, I am. She's not all the way African American. So we're gonna start there. And then we'll move forward. So, so. Uh, oh, okay. Um, real quick. Hi, hi, everybody. Thank you for, you know, tuning in. Thank you, Crystal, for having me. Okay. It's such an honor. Um, well, I'll start. Yeah, I'm from Copenhagen, Denmark, which is near Germany. Um, a uh, my dad's African American, my mom's Danish mm -hmm. and German, and I grew up in America. I grew up in the states. I so I consider myself African American. Hang out with everyone that's African American. <laughs> But, you know, that, that's what I identify with. Mm -hmm. um, and I grew up in New York, between New York, St. Louis, Chicago. I kind of just was all over the place, you know how it is. Sometimes you just don't grow up in one place. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and then along the way just, just you know, took a, took a liking to the arts mm -hmm. uh, from a very young age and wanted to, to, to pursue a career as an actor. But, you know, my childhood was so... Ugh, it was so horrible, so chaotic, mm -hmm. that along the way, you know, I was trying to deal with inside issues mm -hmm. in, in my home and also keep keep my mind on, you know, on the goals that I, you know, had wanted to set for myself early on. Exactly. I uh, traveled all around, lived in L.A., uh, went to New Orleans, opened up a, a business there, an acting studio where I was able to mentor kids and in acting. Um, for Briefly, I decided to open a talent agency, very successful talent agency in New Orleans. I did that. Mm -hmm. Then I, I said, well, let me try to produce some stuff, produce a couple of projects mm -hmm. um, out of my uh, production company. So I kind of was just getting my feel in the entertainment industry. But the one thing that I always, always knew that I loved the most was acting. Yeah. You, More than anything. Natural born, <laughs> on and off camera. This is a natural yes. born actor. So I kept going back to, okay, acting, and you know, and I dibble in this and that, but it was still always acting. I still have my acting studio in New Orleans. And um, while I'm pursuing other, other goals and stuff in life, um, you know, acting is a passion for me, and it's something that will continue, you know, hopefully on this journey right. in my life. Oh, for sure. It, it, it's, <laughs> I, I don't see a Jack Fleming without a, acting. It, it's just a, I'm so excited about the new turn life is taking for you. you Thank know, which, you. Which, you know, which leads to our next point. Okay. Um, your story. <laughs> Let, let's 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 talk about some things we we. A lot of times, those that are on the outside mm -hmm. of Hollywood, mm -hmm. the only thing they have to base <clears throat> information-wise, the only mm -hmm. thing they have to base off is what they see in the news, the media, whether right. it's positive, mm -hmm. whether it's negative, whether it's truth, correct, or whether it's a lie. You know, that's all that the the 
the general population has to base it off of. Right. But you being one that actually has lived the Hollywood life, that mm-hmm. knows the ins and outs, mm-hmm. and had to make some life-changing decisions oh, yeah. concerning Absolutely. your own life. Uh-huh. You know, we remember, um, most will remember Jack from, in the Christian community, most will remember you from Bishop Jake's world-renowned Woman That Are Loosed on the Seventh Day, yeah, which powerful, you were phenomenal. Powerful film. T- oh, my gosh. I'm so grateful that, yeah. you know, T.D. Jake's uh, company decided to to move forward with a project uh, like that. It, it's such a strong story. Great director, Nima mm-hmm. Barnett. It was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. How, how was it? You know, we, we shared times, Jack, where we, we spoke about your first encounter with Bishop Jake's. <laughs> you know? I was in awe. I was like, <laughs> wow. Like, you know, T.D. Jakes, Bishop, like, I just was in awe of him. Mm-hmm. His presence, his his message, uh, we were filming in the church and uh, in, in New Orleans, and uh, Sharon Leal and Blair Underwood star in the movie, and I play her best friend, Sharon Leal. And I just remember being so captivated mm-hmm. by what Bishop T.D. Jakes had to say. I was just caught up and I was like oh I'm in the moment as an actor <laughs> but I'm really in the moment as as a as a human yes. being a Christian like right. the message oh mm-hmm. he's powerful wow yeah yeah wow. yeah I could that, listen to him all day all night forever that's awesome that's awesome, <laughs> that's awesome. we're hoping that um the next movie Bishop Jackson you know? <laughs> now that's that that's phenomenal that was one woman that are loose on the seven days one of many movies thank you, you. know Jack you have yeah. you have your your portfolio mm-hmm. in the industry is, I mean, it's phenomenal. Oh, thank you, you have been from a cop to a crackhead, to a crackhead, <laughs> to a scaffold, something, you yeah, know, what? action person. Yeah, you know, I'm really grateful because I, I, I can't, I'm not really like a character, character actor. Okay. But then if I showed you this picture of me as this green witch, you might go, wait a minute. Um, I but I, I like, I like roles that are challenging that have a story that your character is moving the story forward and um you know i don't want to play anything on the surface i I want layers and subtext and all of that in in the characters that i play Mm -hmm. and so i've been able and fortunate to go from a lawyer to a drug addict to the baller's wife that's pretty layer kind of kind of like was in T.D. Jake's movie you know all this on the outside but on the inside just broken just a mess a hot mess wow um those those kind of roles interest me it's quite interesting because when we when we think about woman that are loose on the seventh day Jack you can relate to that movie okay so Crystal keeps calling me Jack (laughs) because my name is Jacqueline Fleming but my nickname is Jack it's J-A-Q so I don't want y'all to be like wait a minute why she keep calling her Jack we're talking to two different people here no Jack we're talking to Jacqueline Fleming and Jack no no, actually Jack is is the is the name that the acting studio. Yeah, Jack Entertainment, Jack Acting Studio. Jack is is my company. Right. Um, you know, Jack J A Q. And everybody calls me Jack. I, I very few people will say, "Hey, Jacqueline." Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, and I told people, "Don't call me Jackie. Don't You're call good. me Jackie. Don't call me Jackie." I'll be your Jacqueline. <laughs> I'll be your Jackie. <laughs> and and what was I was credited in Woman the Art Loose as Jackie, and I was like. How did, that was the first time ever, but it's Jack, Jack or Jacqueline. Most of most um, most people don't know this about Jacqueline mm-hmm. or Jack. Jack is a businesswoman. This you better woman, believe it. <laughs> I'm talking a businesswoman. Acting is just a I, part of who she is. I tell is. people all the time, I am a businesswoman yeah. who acts. Yeah, At it. the end of the day, it is show business Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if you are just an artist and you leave off that business part or you don't have people around you Mm -hmm. to handle your business you are probably gonna be all over the place and fall by the wayside financially or Mm -hmm. emotionally or whatever it is at the end of the day it's show business and I am a businesswoman I'm a businesswoman and when it deals with my acting when I deal with whatever entrepreneurial things that I'm going on when mm-hmm. I'm thinking about a project, an indie project that I want to produce in-house. I'm a businesswoman. When I'm mentoring, mm-hmm. I'm about my business. And I explain to these 
kids, uh, the young kids and teens and all the people that I mentor in New Orleans, do not forget. Mm -hmm. This is a business. That was that was powerful. Show business. Show business. It's the business of show. That's period. Good. End of story. That's good. That's good. Jack, what brought you from the Hollywood scene? Even though you are, as we speak, mm -hmm. an acting actress, mm -hmm. not a bootleg. I'm talking about a SAG register, an acting actress. Yeah, yeah. What would make an acting actress <clears throat> with so many roles available to them? What would make you one day decide? You had to get out of Hollywood. Oh, wow. You know, Hollywood is where everyone goes mm -hmm. to get discovered, to get their big break. And I went out to Hollywood and immediately started working as an actor. I was, I was really blessed. But something was missing. Mm -hmm. Something was void in me. And I was searching on the outside for all these things to fill it up, whether it were friends, parties, alcohol, it didn't matter what it was. Mm -hmm. I, I was so unhappy on the inside and so empty and so void that I could not receive any of the blessings that God had for me in Hollywood because I wasn't ready to receive them. Wow. And I remember sitting at my pool in uh, Hollywood, and I, I remember saying, God, I'm so unhappy here. I, I would leave a film set. I was working on CSI Miami. Wow. I left the film set, called my best friend, and I'm like, I'm so sad. And she's like, girl, you just finished working on CSI Miami. <laughs> I was like, I, I just, I feel empty. Wow. It just, nothing was clicking. And, um, you know, I, I remember sitting at the pool, and I had gotten so to the point where I was so sad that I didn't even want to, I could just go from my apartment mm -hmm. down to the pool, from the pool to my apartment, and that's not living. Wow. And I had, let me tell you, mm -hmm. I had this vision board on my wall mm -hmm. of everything that I'm doing now. Right. Wow. And I couldn't, I just saw it. It was manifest. It was right there, and I was like, how is this going to manifest? And I think because I wasn't supposed to be there, and I wasn't doing what, of the inside was just all wrecked. Mm -hmm. So God mm -hmm. brought me from New Orleans, I mean, from L.A. to New Orleans for a New Year's Eve party, I right. overnight bag. Right. Had no idea what God had in store for me wow. when I got to New Orleans. Wow. And what happened to me in New Orleans in the last, oh, my God. What, what happened to me in New Orleans in the last, um, Six years changed my life. Wow. wow. It changed my life, Crystal, and it is still changing my life. Because, you know, to look at you, Jack, you are beautiful on the outside. You, you are an awesome, awesome actress. Thank you. Our young people, whether it be in the church community, the Christian community, or outside, mm -hmm. you know, they aspire to be like you. Oh, thank you know, you. they aspire to be like other actors and actresses and R and B singers and right, right. you know I get rock it. singers, yeah, I get you know, everybody wants to be Lindsay Lowe well, well not nah, I mean <laughs> they want to be Britney. I, I mean, mean, you, you know, know, you look at you look at these these images and that's what it is, you know, there's the person and the personality. Mm -hmm. And you look and you go, Wow, I want that lifestyle. Yes. Or I want this. Or I want yes. that hair. I want that, you know, whatever, that car, that body, that voice. You know, um, when people when people see me now, more than anything, mm -hmm. I, I would want them to say, I like her on the inside. Wow. I, I'm not even whatever's going on on the outside or whatever she drive or whatever she got. It's something about her on the inside. Mm -hmm. It leads me to this. When our young people in today's society, which is a society that's um, being influenced mm -hmm. by reality TV, oh, yeah. you, you know, the big house, the baller boyfriend mm -hmm. or the baller husband, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all of these things are defining to our young women today. Oh, absolutely they are. What life, what's considered happy. Right. What's right. considered the standard. Successful. Successful. Uh, successful. Exactly. Uh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. when somebody like you, mm -hmm. oh, let's go deeper. Okay. Somebody like you, what's on the other side when the glamour, when, when the lights go off, mm -hmm. the cameras go off, and you're talking about just the person right. of Jack or just the person of the 
of the image that mm -hmm. was portrayed on TV. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the depression, when it comes to the influence of the lifestyle, when mm -hmm. it comes to the demand of keeping up with the lifestyle, mm -hmm. how how difficult is that to handle? Well, I, I'll tell you what you're going to get now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll see me watching movies. I'll, if you were to have a camera and say, oh, it's 11 o'clock, let's go spy on Jack. Uh -huh. I'll probably be in the gym mm -hmm. or uh, reading a, a book, an inspirational book, or watching a movie or journaling, mm -hmm. um, doing something that's spiritually uh, feeding me, like, you know, my mind, my body, my spirit. It, mm -hmm. It's going to be something that is positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, you know, in the past, God right. knows right. what you would have seen me doing. Right. But, you know, that's what you would see me doing now. And, and I need to do that because I know that there, there's a path that I'm supposed to take. Mm -hmm. And I can't deviate off that path. Awesome. I can't. Awesome. You know, when, when, when someone, when someone is, is, like, if you know, like, you're the oldest kid and you have this responsibility and, and you know it and then you go off and do all this stuff, it's this chain effect. Mm -hmm. It just it just throws everything off in the house. Mm -hmm. it, you, you know what I mean? And, right. and is it fair that you're the one everybody is relying on or that you were the one that was picked? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know I've been chosen. Right, wow. And I never wanted to accept that before. I didn't want that responsibility. I was like, I don't want to be the role model. Exactly. I want to go do this. Yeah. I, why well, I got to be... We hear that from a lot of celebrities. But I know for a fact because mm -hmm. God has spared me too many times and delivered me and brought me, girl, it, it, it's like my friends are like, dude, you have like nine lives. <laughs> They're like, there's some angels that love you. Yeah. And so you know. And so I said, okay, all right, God, this is good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to embrace this. That's good. And when I started to embrace it, it was the best thing I ever did. I fell in love. That's phenomenal. Fell in love. You, you, know, you know how we have those conversations about just being in love with God. Oh, absolutely. You recognize that uh, in and of yourself, mm -hmm. it's just no way we could have ever gotten to the place of peace that we are today. You know? And all how. All things, all glory to God. How, I mean, how often do we remember? King. The days of no peace. You can't even, you couldn't, man, mm -hmm. I'm so at peace mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm just not even worried. I, I pray, I'm praying that God direct my path. I'm not making one move if I, if I don't hear from God, you know, when we're meditating, mm -hmm. you know, that that's when God is talking to us. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. I'm praying, mm -hmm. I'm talking to God. But mm -hmm. I meditate and I listen. I don't make a move. I'm not making. A, I've been wanting to come to Atlanta for a year and a half, maybe two years. Mm -hmm. You know that. Uh -huh. yeah. I was not making a move until I heard from God. That's powerful. What caused the change? Just in my heart knew that I was supposed to be living a certain way and I was touching lives and in order for me to continue to touch lives and and have the impact that I was having you know these kids these young kids touching their lives you can't be off doing blah 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 and blah 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 and then come and tell a kid and look in their face and tell them how they ought to try and live their life. Mm -hmm. If you're not living your life a right. certain way. Right. You know what I mean? And not it gets to a point where you have to live a, a life based on rigorous mm -hmm. honesty. Mm -hmm. Rigorous honesty is the program that I work. Right. And I'm held accountable for whatever I do. Very good. I'm held accountable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This mm -hmm. is not a game to me. Like, I... It, it I ain't gonna say how old I am, mm -hmm. but it didn't happen overnight. It took me 25. it took me a long time <laughs> to get here and I got beat up pretty bad. Yeah. I got beat up. Yeah. And it took what it took to get me to this point. Wow. And I do not wanna be outside God's favor. That's good. No more. Ever. Ever. <laughs> and I, I know this to be a fact, that, that this is coming from a very genuine place. Oh, absolutely. Even to the point, you just recently turned down. I turned down. Yes, I did. A major yes. leading role in a movie. I sure did. Why? Because I said, I am not saying those words out of my mouth. 
I'm not saying that out of my mouth. You, you, I, that, that's so, like, I can't be like, oh, God, I love you, and I'm walking this Christian faith, and then you see me out there, and I'm, you know, mm -hmm. doing this, or I'm, you know, cursing and doing all this nonsense. I get some movie roles. It's part of the script, mm -hmm. and that's the kind of movie it is. Mm -hmm. But I get some movie roles, you know, some films, they just throw that in there, right. and it's not necessary. It's not how I want to be seen as a leading lady in Hollywood or Hollywood South, and it definitely is not the image that I want people to look up and say, okay, well, she over here on this day doing all this, and then over here on this day she doing all this. Mm -hmm. No, not me. Mm -hmm. How difficult does it make not that me. in the industry? I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like God will open doors for me anywhere. God could sit here and write me a star and role in a film he could write my tv series i'm not worried about it but i'm not going to um I, i'm not going i'm not i'm not going to settle and 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 put myself out there like that i'm just not but had you talked to me in hollywood mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been no thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been i would be like yeah yeah do you know what i'm saying yeah, yes. but not at this point in my life and you know i think everybody's journey is different when you get there that's that's on you you can't mm -hmm. say okay well some people get here to this revelation at 20 mm -hmm. i take my hat off to people like that right. you know like wow you're that young and you got it mm -hmm. like you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't come from a ch i came from a, a chaotic abusive alcoholic destructive childhood and that's what i knew to self-destruct wow. so all this stuff learning to take care of jack learning to take care of other people, mm -hmm. learning to do the right thing. Right. That was all self-taught as I went along. Wow. I didn't have nobody to teach me. I'm just getting mentors. <laughs> but you've done well. You, you've done well in spite of that. You know, I think about, Jack, you come from, you have defied so many odds. Mm -hmm. And not only in your Hollywood career, but in your personal life. Thank you. You know, mm -hmm. you're talking about, Let's talk about a little about your upbringing. Mm -hmm. the, often in church, we talk about generational curses. Oh, absolutely. Breaking generational mm -hmm. curses, being the one in your family that breaks the curse, that stops it for the next generation and the mm -hmm. next generation. Mm -hmm. When you think about, when we talk about your life in particular today, mm -hmm. it's like, let's talk about the two parents that God gave you. Mm -hmm. You know, we, mm -hmm. we it's the truth. It's the two parents that God gave mm -hmm. you. Let's talk about the the journey from what you were birthed into mm -hmm. to coming to this place where you are now. It's like knowing and finally getting to a place to mm -hmm. understand the root right. of what caused your journey <laughs> to go in this direction. Right. And well, now you're here. Well, no, you you know, sometimes you can look in people's family and go, well, this family men member, you know, my my mom or my grandmother had a mental illness or they were a drug addict or they were, you know, bipolar, whatever it is, you know, they were a sex addict. I don't know what people, everybody deals with. Mm -hmm. I can just say for me that those generational curses, poverty, where there's poverty, you know what I mean? Not being able to make no money. Why well, I can't make no money? Well your, well, your daddy and your mama never had no money. Their parents never had no money. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like these generational yes. <laughs> yes. curses just keep well I'm going to go on to the next generation and now I'm going to show up in the next generation mm -hmm. and at some point you know you got to be like this is where it's going to end mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it ain't going no further Wow. and um, I really had to look at my genealogy both on my birth mother's side and my birth father's side and say, where is all this coming from? Well, this, this, and that happened, and that happened, and it's so strong and prevalent. And then I got to the point, and I am the only child by my birth mother. Mm -hmm. She she got killed when she was 19. I am the only child by my birth mother and, the, and, and my birth father together. But on both sides of their family, it's a hot mess. Wow. <laughs> it's hotter than a hot mess. Uh, we all can relate. It's, it's, no, yeah. it's hotter than a hot mess. Yeah, we, we all come And so things. I just sat there and I was like, I am not, I'm not going, I'm not going to go out like that. Mm -hmm. That's good. I ain't gonna go out like that. And it, it took a long time because what whatever that generational curse is, and it's a few of them, mm -hmm. was trying to kill me. Wow. It's trying to take me out. Wow. 
That's powerful because for you to even be sitting here today to talk about it, you know, we think about those that um, we've seen Mm -hmm. from the Hollywood perspective Mm -hmm. that never made it to this day. They shot themselves. Mm -hmm. They overdosed. They uh, Mm -hmm. jumped out windows. They did whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they did, you know. Um, But, you know, if and and, and that's why I say you get to a point, you're like, we have choices. Mm -hmm. Do I want to live this way? Or do I want to live this way? And I get that some things are, are mental and physical and spiritual, and, and they got this hold on you. You mm-hmm, know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you got that if if certain people you could look at them and say, man, they broke through. Mm-hmm. They broke through that. They 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 not like this. They not like that. How did they do it? Those are the people that you need to read up on or go find or mm-hmm. you know you go to church. They lay hands on mm-hmm. you. Whatever mm-hmm. it is, you better get get it together. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you might not make oh, yeah. it to see tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow may not never come. Oh, we, you talking, <laughs> baby? Yes. And I'm sitting there and I said, okay, you might not make it till tomorrow. You wow. better pull it together today. Wow. And I had so many todays, so many todays, and they just kept falling into tomorrow. And I said, man, that's powerful. I might as well just give up. That's powerful. But anyway. You, I, I'll share my story one day. That's powerful. I kept having so many todays that kept falling into tomorrow. We said no crying. We said no crying. <laughs> I ain't crying. We, we're not I gonna am cry. not crying. I am. Do I, I do I look like I'm crying? I'm, See my eyes all I'm bright. Going down. I'm going down. <laughs> I'm going down. I'm going down. It's it's but it's because I know I, I've seen I've seen a part of the journey, mm-hmm. and oh, it's absolutely. like to see you mm-hmm. here. I'm I'm so excited. Just so I'm excited because your testimony is one that's going to break through into the hearts and minds what of makes so you think many. I'm gonna tell my testimony. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm but just it is saying my testimony. The part, it, it but don't yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah, the I fact get it. You're yeah. still sitting here. I'm still. That's my actually. <laughs> that is my testimony. That's the testimony. I'm Dad. still standing. I, you know, when I was asked to speak at an empowerment, a women's empowerment conference. Oh. About a year and a half ago, almost, mm. and it uh, last summer, something like that, and it was the first time that I shared my testimony in front of hundreds of women, and I didn't want to do it. Wow. I told this young lady, um, she put it on Jill Green. I said, "No, Jill, no, no, like Next that," thing. because it's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. You know, oh. it's humiliating. And then you don't want everybody in your business mm-hmm. like that. They may go, oh, something wrong with that girl, but they don't have to know what. Right. right. You don't have to know what. You just, oh, she crazy. Your, but you don't have to know why. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do I have to tell you why? <laughs> I am why? not going to legitimize that. I'm not going to, you know what, fine, call me crazy, <laughs> but you ain't going to know why. <laughs> so I was like, no, nah, I don't think I want to do this. I was like, no. Nah. And my best friend, I love my best friend, Mickey Bow. She was like, girl, <laughs> girl. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. She kept calling and calling, and Jill just kept calling. And the next thing you know, I did it. And um, I can't have, it, it was women from all over the world, and they yeah. came up and they said, girl, you got to come to my city mm-hmm. and share this testimony. I never would have looked at you and thought that. Mm-hmm. I'd have known you. My kid go to your acting studio. You have been through what? Wow. And they were blown away because in my acting studio, you've never seen it. I'm behind the desk. Hey, kids. I'm yeah. smiling. I'm going to my auditions. I'm doing my film work. And so many people did not know what I was dealing with. Wow. And, um, you it's, know. It's I, a world testimony. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's a, whether she thinks she's going to tell it or not, it, it's a world <laughs> testimony. Because but I, I was I was happy, you know, afterwards I was like, if it, if it, I said, God, if it impacted anyone, if it helped anyone, if it, if it, if it saved a life, mm-hmm. if it, whatever, God, continue to use me. And uh, I got a letter um, saying, you know, Jill Green, and then they said, your testimony, and, and so many of us spoke, mm-hmm. she said, it was the topic for the weekend. Wow. Wow. She said, at the pajama parties we did, at the, the late luncheons, at this and that, your testimony kept coming up and they just were like if she could make it if she survived all that girl I know I could make it that's phenomenal that's phenomenal because 
Um, by the way, congratulations on your Trailblazers. Oh, right? my God. Yes. That's right. Oh, Trailblazer thank you. 2014 of New Orleans. Yes. I'm, I'm really proud. The ceremony is in August. I, I couldn't believe it when they said that I was – there's 12 tra- Trailblazers that they uh, – they are they're awarding or, or nominating or however mm-hmm. it is you get an award. I never got one before, so I'm like I don't even know how it works. Mm-hmm. But um, they said that um, I was picked as 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 one of the Trailblazers for 2014, and I'm just like wow. That's phenomenal. That's I'm I'm not shocked. I'm just glad that everybody <laughs> else got it now. You know, but it's let's talk about this new this new role that you just took on and this new this new production that you just finished. Let's talk about AHA. Oh, t- my AHA gosh. is a production that's actually... A movie, yeah. It's a movie that's airing on TBN yes. starting... Actually, I think um, in April they're going to send over the, uh, the the air dates, but it's about to air on TBN for six weeks in a row. Mm-hmm. It's a TV movie. And, um, and it's AHA for um, Awakening Honesty Action. And this character, Claire... I play this character, Claire, and you talk about what she's going through. You know how sometimes you, 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 you think you're going through a midlife crisis and you're like, everything looks greener on that side of the street. Mm-hmm. Well, honey, looking over there, tore her up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. tore her to pieces. She should have stayed on this side of the street. Well, you know that, but, but, but Jack, that's real life. Yeah. That, that's a lot of the mistakes that a lot of us have made. Mm-hmm. Uh, to get to this place where we are today, this is uh, this is why we're talking about what we're talking right, about today right. because that grass looks so green on us. It side. sure does. It looks so much better. That <laughs> car, that out. house, yeah. that job, that yeah. man, you know, all that look better over there. And then you find out what's right in front of you. Wow. So this is a, a movie I produced was, by TBN. Produced by City on a Hill Productions, directed by Shane uh, Souter, they do a, a a ton of Christian films that that in, impactful. And and the uh, pastor is out of Kentucky. He's like a, a huge congregation. It's it's there. Mm-hmm. It's like twenty thousand. You know, one of those Superdome kind of churches, but he's so impactful. Like I went to the service while I was there, just to see like. And I was like, oh, wow. And he's just down to earth, and he's the message is so strong, and he was standing on stage in his jeans and his sneakers, and I was, like, just drawn into what he was saying and, and, and people all around the world, and he cares so much about people who have nothing. Like, wow. it's just a good spirit. Wow. But anyway, when I, when I got the script, I, I was reading it for my audition, and I was crying. Wow. I was just crying so hard when I read the script. I was like, oh my God. And just watching some of the film clips, I mm-hmm. was like, it's gonna be a powerful movie. I hope you all, all enjoy it. Yeah. Also stars my boy, Michael Beasley. Oh, for sure. Atlanta's own. For sure. I'm telling you, this is going to be so new for TBN, for the Christian audience to see a movie that has African-American leading characters on TBN. This is something very new for the Christian community. Well, it's three stories in one. Mm -hmm. There's a Latin family, there's a Caucasian family, and I am the black family. And and so the three stories keep intertwining, and it's about the prodigal son, Martin Day. And it just keeps intertwining. And you see the journey of all three of our lives in this story. And it's like this one common place, like this cafe where where our lives keep going and then we don't know each other. It's so powerful. Wow. I'm so grateful to have been a part of that story. I'm so happy for you. We'll, we'll, um, guys, we'll keep you updated as to when the show airs <laughs> so that we can support TBN and show TBN that there is an audience TBN. that um, yes. we, we, we're we excited about movies that relate to us yes. that are customized about the, the things of God, the word itself mm-hmm. brought into um, the 21st century so this is a, a it, it's a great thing thank you TBN <laughs> thank you TBN thank you TBN, Pound so, TBN on Twitter sure. <laughs> shout out, shout out. Uh, we, we are so <laughs> grateful but um, Jack what I, what I want you to do is to let people know how to get in contact with you okay. because your message, you know, you again, I say you are still a acting, you're a working actress, so you're yes. not somebody that left Hollywood. Oh, no. You're I, no longer in the scene. I am so grateful. Like, I, I, I and, and I really am grateful because I work 
all the time mm -hmm. as an actress. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to working on a TV series this year, like a contract role. I was up, the one show we shot, it didn't get picked up by a certain network, but you know, that may not mean another network may not pick it up. But you know, I do so many movies and I'm so grateful to be a working actor. That's how I make my living and I'm grateful awesome. for it. Um, I'm grateful to be able to mentor anyone who has an aspiration to be in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. And you can you can get at me. I'm like a Jack Fleming. Now that's yeah. J-A-Q. It's short for Jacqueline. Right. No <laughs> so at Jack Fleming on Twitter, at Jack Fleming on Instagram, and then it's Jacqueline Fleming on Facebook. Um, I don't know. I have like four or five pages. I don't yeah. know. Well, I, I, admonish you. <clears throat> I admonish you guys to reach out to Jack. When it comes to... Being a speaker, as you see, she is not shy. Um, when it comes to sharing... I want to sit on the couch with some women and we just talk about oh, it. Oh, I mean, a serious panel because this is serious it. conversation. And we change and, sure. and transform some lives. Let's, sure. You know, I, who, come on. Don't you want to... If you got a story, come on, let's get on this couch. Yeah, let's... Uh, Pillow let, talk. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. That's a show. Real talk. <laughs> Real talk. Real talk. With Crystal Smith. With Jacqueline Fleming. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're going to have a part two to this interview. But this time she's going to tell this testimony. She acting like she ain't going to tell. So you guys stay tuned. Thanks again for tuning in to Joy 105. Thank you.